microphone. We're good. Perfect, perfect. And yeah, uh, folks, before we get started, if you want to just chime in, we have people watching through the Zoom as well as we're streaming uh, live to various groups. Feel free to chime in where you're from. And if you have any questions for me or for Ann Miller, Ann Miller, I'm excited. She's the vice president of both luxury and commercial at Remax Corporate uh, in, in, in Denver. And um, I've gotten to see her present and uh, we see each other at a lot of conferences, so I'm really uh, honored uh, for you to block off some time and share with our audience a little bit more about you and Remax and collections, as well as, you know, just how you guys are pivoting like we all are in this unprecedented time. So uh, thank you again for, for your time and thanks for being here. Um, t tell everybody a little bit about yourself and, and your position and, um, sure. and a little bit about um, you know, Remax uh, Luxury and, and, and the Collections Division, if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Well, first, Michael, thank you so much for inviting me. I've heard Michael present too. He's a master uh, as well. So uh, I'm just really privileged and honored to be here. So thank you for the invitation. Um, you've had some unbelievable guests on your show. So I hope I can uh, live up to the expectation. No pressure. I know you have John Sheplak after me and uh, this audience is going to absolutely love him. I'm glad I come after or before John yeah. uh, versus after. So I follow a lot of John's principles. Uh, so he's a coach for us as well. So great stuff. But anyway, yeah. a little bit about, I'm just going to start uh, first Remax background and then a little bit about my background and Please, just yes. stop, stop me anytime, Michael, if I just get on a roll. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Um, so with Remax, uh, Remax was founded uh, 47 years ago by Dale, Dave and Gail Linegar, uh, and with the principles of helping people. So we like to say we're a business that helps businesses, but we're a business that helps people. Um, one of our charitable organizations that we have a very serious affiliation is Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. Mm -hmm. So our agents have donated millions of dollars to help children all around the world uh, through Children's Miracle Network organization. And uh, we're really proud of the giving back. And I truly am humbled and grateful to be working for an organization that not only takes, you know, agents and, um, practitioners, if you will, for uh, commercial, since I'm in both areas, commercial and collection, but uh, to be working with uh, a company that truly values people and giving back. So a little bit about my background. Oh, by the way, yes, we're in 110 countries and territories as well with 130,000 agents. And uh, we're very proud of the fact that we are uh, the most productive agents uh, as far as all the franchises in real estate. So we're almost two to one as far as production against other brands. So it's a, you know, um, I think because of education, because of how serious we take our business in the way of giving back and education, such as what you do, Michael, uh, we become the most productive agents. So yeah, that, uh, a little bit about awesome. my background. Mm -hmm. I saw I saw uh, the recent release of uh, Steve uh, Steve Murray and Real Trends, and uh -huh. you know uh, they they released some great data as well as you know Stefan Swinepool and T three sixty, but yeah I saw that uh, Remax from a production standpoint mm -hmm. number one. So con congratulations. Thank you, thank you. So uh, a little bit about my background. I've been with Remax seven years now. I just celebrated a seven year anniversary and I started in land development. So from land development went into home sales and it was more production home sales from a local builder here in Denver. Okay. Uh, and then from there, I was hired away from a developer to Chicago and worked on a luxury community here also in Denver in Cherry Creek an affluent neighborhood. Uh, and then when that project finished and we sold out successfully, then went to work out of our Chicago office for land acquisition and development. So my projects uh, have been all over the US. Uh, I was in New York um, on Central Park West. We had a project, uh, Streeterville, Chicago, for those you know Chicago. Uh, you also know my developer that I used to work for uh, being in Chicago. Uh, and then also Denver, Four Seasons, I worked on um, in Colorado, Charlotte, North Carolina, a little bit in Texas. Um, and then North Carolina was my most recent prior to coming to Remax. So what I used to do, uh, I would go in for land acquisition and development and then work with uh, the local communities on what our outreach needed to be right. from a local aspect. And then everything with the developer from what do the interior of the homes need to look like, uh, exterior communities, our websites, our marketing materials, and then hiring and training all of uh, the on-site teams that were going to be selling our luxury product. So, the, and then of course budgets and marketing and everything else that goes into that. 
So uh, it's been a really incredible career for the last you know 25 plus years. And then when I was planning a move back to Chicago, when my project in North Carolina finished up, uh, I got a call from Remax. And uh, it's truly been a privilege to be here the last seven years and grow our brands, the Remax collection, our luxury brand and Remax commercial. Well, thank you for that. Uh, so seven years, you just, uh, happy anniversary. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Your seventh year. And so Remax collection, like the banner behind you, that's, uh, the, that's the name of your luxury division. They call it the Remax collection. Yes. Uh, it's, is there a price point um, that Remax uh, defines luxury? We say, Michael, similar to you, two times the average in any zip code area. And, uh, you know, a lot of our countries don't have zip codes or MLSs, but sure. they definitely know what luxury looks and feels like. And they definitely know what two times the average is. So that's why we, we take that number. A lot of times it does come into that top 10% of the market, mm -hmm. but they do understand globally, you know, what that, the Remax collection, what that magic uh, piece needs to look like in the way of luxury format. Okay, and uh, very helpful. So for those, you know, different brands, different brokerages, different boutique uh, companies, you know, we have people uh, watching this from the real estate community. We have people internationally watching, uh, Costa Rica friends that are chiming in, uh, but uh, we also have some consumers. I have a, a, a gal that I went to high school with that's got her home on the market uh, with a Remax agent in St. Charles, Illinois, and she's been watching and learning and chiming in afterwards saying, hey, that was helpful. Um, so thank you for the definition there. And you also mentioned internationally. Talk to me, um, Remax, and I'm not putting you on the spot as far as number of countries, but you guys are an international brand. Talk to me a little bit about that, if you wouldn't mind. So we're Especially in, with uh, high end and luxury, right? It goes hand in hand because there is so much international buyers, uh, you know, especially in the upper price points. It does. And so, uh, you know, it depends on the country. Some countries require that you have uh, a background uh, or take a course in luxury uh, to be part of the Remax collection to use okay. it in their offices. And others say, as long as you have properties that qualify, uh, meaning single family, townhome and, and condominium, those are what qualifies. Land is considered commercial. Okay. Uh, and we can go into some details about that later. But uh, on if you have land, how to qualify for luxury. However, you know, it just depends on the office and how they want to utilize the brand and making sure that they use the brand specifically for luxury only. So I understand some brands allow a luxury tag on absolutely everything. We do it a little bit different in the sense of, you know, to be part of the Remax collection, you must have a luxury listing and you may only use it on luxury listings. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very good. And uh, is it, is it, are, do agents have to qualify to be a Remax collection agent or the price point of the property or the combination? It, it's the price point of the property dominantly, Michael. Okay. However, it goes to the original, you know, if an office states in their program to bring on luxury agents or to bring on the Remax collection logo into their office or the platform of using tools and resources, the office determines if in fact on a global basis if they can use the remax collection in your office uh for the us it's it's definitely based on price point so if you okay. have a listing that meets the price point requirement you're part of the remax collection and that's a separate website right with just uh, luxury properties correct it's luxury only properties and our url is remax.com forward slash luxury or the Remax collection, you can get to us either way. Okay. And then we also syndicate to obviously remax.com. We have a global website, uh, so it's global.remax.com. And then um, keeping up with you know what our competitors always do, we also syndicate to Wall Street Journal and then listings over a million dollars go to Mansion Global. Oh, that's great, that's All great. All the different websites. You, you, and you mentioned, um, you know, having a finger on the pulse, you know, we, you and I had a nice sit down at the uh, Brad Inman's Luxury Connect, which used to be every October in Beverly Hills. And uh, again, I, I'm a big believer that iron sharpens iron. I'm a big believer that, you know, th the mm -hmm. best brokerages, the best agents don't have a scarcity mindset. And uh, as a testament of you coming on here, willing to share, I know you have that same mentality. So mm -hmm. I, I wanted to uh, 
just acknowledge that because uh, I, I do think for us to raise the tide in the industry, you know, there's got to be collaboration and hopefully during this time that we're in, you know, people are more sensitive and, and, and priorities, you know, change a little bit and like, hey, let's, we're in this together. Let's figure out a way to, you know, to, to help the consumer as well as help each other's, you know, as agents. Right. I agree. You know, I'm... <laughs> as we are global we're getting on the calls globally you know everyone on this call probably the number one thing we're doing is we're on the phones and if you're not on the phones we're already behind the game so whether i sit at a corporate desk or not you know my customers my clients are our brokers and agents and and i need to meet them wherever they are how may i help that's our role right now and then how do we collaborate and bring information across so if i'm talking to an agent uh, it, it's been really great because uh, I was fortunate to be able to travel globally prior to all of this. And I know I will again, I know I'll be able to see everyone. Yeah, I know. Hopefully face. sooner than later, right? Hopefully soon. Yeah. I will tell you the one thing that's been pretty incredible is the connection that we all have. And so we've been getting on these zoom chats and having these happy hours, if you will, right. uh, at all different times of the day and night, you know, to share best practices, best ideas, at the beginning, Michael, you know, you know this, when you first get on the calls, it's how are you? That's, that's what the yeah. calls are about. Yeah. You know, we're seven, eight uh, weeks in for, let's say, U.S., but globally, they're 10, 12 weeks in, mm -hmm. you know, so it's how are we moving forward uh, and what pace are we moving forward? Yeah. That's a, that's a great point. So depending on where um, your family, your relatives, your colleagues are based, you know, they either started in this before us or some started after us. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. funny. I was, I was worried that I was uh, doing a training down in Mazatlan, Mexico in March. And, and this is right when the NCAA canceled the, the basketball right. tournaments and the NBA canceled or postponed their season or whatever. And I'm like freaking out saying, am I going to be stuck in this other country <laughs> and not be able to get home to my family? And so they, you know, COVID-19, they had very few cases. This is, you know, March 12th and 13th. And so they were a little behind us, right? So mm -hmm. depending on where people are, they could be going through previous phases where they're, they're about to peak or, or the curve, you know, whatever it might be. So be sensitive um, mm -hmm. to, you know, where people are at. Um, that's mm -hmm. a great point. So I was planning right to when all of this hit the US, uh, I literally was leaving in a week to go to Argentina for our Argentinian convention, Argentina and Uruguay. And oh. uh, so I, I kept checking the news every day, checking, talking to our brokers and owner, broker owners in Argentina. And we were a go, go, go up until uh, Argentina's government made the announcement that said, hey, anyone that comes to our country, because we had not heard of any cases yet in Argentina, and they said, anyone that comes to our country, you're going to be quarantined for 14 days. So oh. that canceled that trip for me right away. Sure. I would have, you know, but in, in, I'm glad because it's safety first, you know, yeah. safety and health first. Yeah. And your um, R4 uh, conference, your big annual conference uh, was in February this year, correct? It was. Last we were. Yeah, we were so lucky. We came home and then about two to three weeks later, everything hit and we had a record number of attendants, almost 6,000 people come. Oh, so awesome. fortunately, we had not heard of any cases that came from the Vegas convention. So we were very fortunate. Great. Yeah, I know there were a couple conferences after that and uh, yeah. some people were a little nervous and that sort of thing. So it's a great conference, by the way, I've, I've attended. Um, so let's let's get into some of the luxury lunch and learn questions. So great background, a little bit about you and, and, and the Remax collection. I appreciate that. Um, and again, depending on where anybody's listening from, feel free to chime in. Uh, we have it in several Facebook groups. Uh, if you have any questions, if you get value from our luxury, this is our tenth, and you're our tenth guest. Uh, we launched this on April tenth. And we already have, it's every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We actually have the whole month of May minus the last uh, two days, uh, the last two slots in May filled. So we already have every Monday, Wednesday, Friday for the whole month of May booked with some amazing guests. Uh, I'll name a couple. Um, I got JP from J Power and Associates on Monday. We have Dustin Black from Black Time moving next Wednesday, getting somebody 
uh, that's not a licensed agent, not at a brokerage, getting their perspective. Um, we have John Cheplak next Friday. I have Eric Sachs on Monday the 11th. Eric's uh, with an uh, amazing company, Breakthrough Broker. I have Peter from uh, Box Brownie. You know Peter very well. I love well. Peter. Um, Box Brownie's a great company. Uh, and, and others. So if you know of anybody, those of you that are watching, that would be a great guest. Just chime in or shoot me a private message. And if you're getting value from these, please send us a like, send us a love, share it to your group. We greatly appreciate it. Um, so let's get and on. Michael, so, first I want to say kudos yes. to you because one of the most important things right now is to continue communication and to stay in the forefront of what's happening in our industry. So thank you uh, to you for not hiding because uh, not that you would anyway, sure. but you know, it, a lot of us don't like to be on video and such, but at the same yeah. time, it provides messaging and information and what our groups need to hear. So thank yeah. you for that. No, you're, you're absolutely welcome. And along those lines, anybody that shares this live stream or comments with a question, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna send you, uh, we're, we're gonna be giving out uh, digital versions of our objection handling playing cards. And there's 52 cards in a deck and there's 16 objections we cover. We're gonna give, be giving these out to anybody that has a question for Ann or myself or shares this live stream. Now, one of my uh, cards in here says, shy real estate agents have skinny kids. And I only share that with you, Ann, because you said, thanks for sharing and coming. You know, you, you guys as agents, as business owners, as entrepreneurs, you know, even more so now, your past clients, your current clients, they need to hear from you. You need to touch base with them. You need to check in with them. And, and Ann said on many of these Zoom calls, at first you're just checking to see, hey, how are you doing you know, as a husband, as a wife, as a parent? You know, forget real estate or whatever other business people are watching, just checking in on a sincere authenticity standpoint mm -hmm. uh, because that's, people are gonna remember that more so than you know, some amazing listing you have during this time. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I agree. And it's small wins. It's, uh, it's just small messages. It doesn't have to be big message. It can be anything to your point, Michael, about being authentic, what's happening you know, in your local community. We, we, for a while there it was, we need to be global experts. Yes, know your local market, but really understand what's happening globally. And while that's still true, it's even more important now to be true local experts. Not only from what inventory you have and what's coming up, but really what's happening in your community. So dial it all the way down, make sure you're giving small messages first because with everything going on around the, in the background, you know, Michael, you have kids at home, you know, some people maybe have, you know, have a lot of pets at home, whatever your home life looks like right now, sometimes that can feel it's an enormous burden or it's just, it feels every day you wake up and say, I have a checklist before I even get to my work list. So make those touch points very small and very authentic, mm -hmm. you know, like the, hey, how are you doing? Or did you know that this pizza joint is having a special tonight for takeout? You know, very simple things. Yeah, very simple things. You're you're absolutely right. Um, so really, really good insight there, and I appreciate you know your authenticity and, and where you come from. Um, so um, a couple questions that I have for you around luxury. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if if you were to wave a magic wand and and fill in the blank to this sentence or question I'm about to ask, in your opinion, the agents, the team leaders, the broker owners. Uh, by the way. Remax is such a great brand. We actually, I, I, I got to share this with you. We launched our designation uh, four years ago, March 31st, down uh, to Mark Wolf, Remax DFW, yes, to Mark's office. It was in a, a studio movie grill, movie, like movie theater. Um, we had 100 agents in there. It was a cool backdrop. But um, I, I got to give a shout out to Mark Wolf. I told him I was interviewing you as well as some of my other Remax friends. And um, again, I wanted to make sure I, I gave a shout out. I'll always be thankful to Mark and his wife, Kay. Uh, you always remember the first people that give you the opportunity with our Absolutely. designation. And um, Remax has been a great supporter. I was on with Integra earlier. They're, they're great at what they do as well. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I did a training for them. So just a shout out to Remax and some of my friends out there. Um, but getting back to the original question, those agents, those team leaders, the, 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 the franchisors, um, 
boutique, small, individual agents, those that when shelter in place, it's different depending on where you are in the world, right. where you are in the country. But when the, when the dust settles, in your opinion, those agents um, that will be successful and those teams and those brokerages that will be successful are those that have blank in common. Um, I can say there's a million things that come up in my mind, but what they have in common is relationships. So they continue to build their relationships, work on the relationships they already have. So the relationships internal, so meaning their other agents that, you know, I hear stories every day, one, because we're on the phone. So I'm on the phones with our brokers and agents and listening, doing a lot more listening than talking. Mm -hmm. uh, believe it or not, sitting on a webinar is, is harder than we think, Michael, because you and I are used to getting on the phones and listening, you know, yes. to what's happening other than the days that we're in the teaching mode. So, right. but it's, it's listening and having those relationships uh, with our agents and then moving on to that. But with our agents, it's them having the relationships with their clients. So they are going to be doing the best because to what we mentioned earlier, they're not hiding. They're out there. They're at the forefront. They're saying, I'm here for you. I, I'm here for whatever you need that to be. You know, it, it, soon it may be a switch. I have other realtors that are sharing with me in the luxury space that they've never stopped, that they're still as busy as they were before. You know, they already had these deals in their pipeline. March looked great. What does April look like? Uh, so, you know, they're still moving forward, but it's the, the, the basic, the basis of that is their relationships. That's where it starts. That's awesome. So relationships, being authentic in those relationships, uh, being present, right? I mean, there's the old adage, you have two ears and one mouth for good reason. You got to listen a lot more than you talk. So um, depending on where people's personality types are, I know Remax is a big disc personality profile and that's a, there's Myers-Briggs, there's Colby, there's other ones out there. There's some free disc personality profile test. I know Tony Robbins, the motivational speaker, they offer one, but uh, I recommend people uh, take the disc test, figure out what your predominant and your secondary is. Uh, but, you know, sometimes for, depending on your personality type, you know, you're so excited. You want to, you want to answer that next question before that person's even done, but just mm -hmm. slowing down, being, in, you know, being attentive, being in the moment, my phone's out of sight, out of mind. You know, you mentioned, oh, I got to turn the phone, like being focused. And that's, that's difficult. It's very difficult during COVID-19 if you're working from home and you're not used to it. I'll have a question later about when at home that I'll ask you any tips that you have for, for those. Um, but that was an awesome answer and uh, appreciate that. Um, are, are there, is there something different or unique uh, that maybe you've heard some of your offices or some of your agents are doing now during this, you know, shelter in place, if you will, depending on what part of the country you're in. May 1st, many are, you know, you know loosening some of those standards today. But, uh, but is there anything that, uh, you know, maybe a best practice that you're hearing uh, an agent or an office do today versus a month ago uh, or two months ago before all of this? So I, one of the things I'm really proud of when we talked about uh, productive agents yeah. is, you know, sure, that first week you're kind of in shock, right? Everyone was like, is this really happening? What's really going on? Is, you know, is this really what's going on in the world and in the news? And, and you're trying to take it all in. Mm -hmm. And after that, it's go time. Go time for everybody. Go time for getting on the phones, talking to your clients. Uh, everyone has become experts at Zoom, uh, myself included. So, you know, those of us that were okay in technology now have learned to be really great at technology. So that, and I think what I'm hearing from a lot of our groups is the learning aspect. We take a lot of time to work in our business, but not on our business. And by that, I mean work on ourselves in our business. I realize one of the things I'm finding I absolutely love, not love about this time, I don't love being home you know, with the dog, sure. Sure. but what I really am enjoying about this time is, is understanding things about me, and I'm sure others are doing the same things that I'm enjoying that I sort of got away from or lost because there always seemed to be another something in the process to work in my business. And one of those is learning. Uh, I am realizing I love to be a student of our industry. I'm passionate, Michael, just like you are about luxury, about commercial. Uh, 
but I'm realizing my, where my interests lie and how much I'm enjoying the research aspect and the realism of it uh, and how it's affecting our consumers, our clients and our agents. So I would say the technology aspect of it, but the connection to uh, the tools, meaning the Zooms and having those conversations with their clients and trying to figure out how we do business. Uh, we already know how to do business, but how we do it in alternating ways uh, and how we're gonna move forward you know, in this business and these relationships. But it really is, I called out some people on uh, different webinars that I've been on and different um, Zoom meetings that I've been on when I can only see their name, you know, across sure, the screen. Sure. And, and I'll say, you know, bottom line, this is a relationship business and you know this. And if I was sitting on a Zoom meeting with anyone and I said, how would this be? If I'm sitting on a Zoom and I'm a person and I'm ready to give a referral, who do you think in this Zoom meeting room I'm going to give it to? The faces that I've made a relationship during these calls, during these months, during these years. And that's very um, important, especially in the luxury sector on how mm -hmm. we're showing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be, being uh, not, you know, not being afraid to contribute during these times, right? I mean, the, the old, uh, you know, fright, uh, fight, flight, or my wife calls it freeze. You know, when people right. are True. faced with adversity, a lot of times those are the, the, the three reactions many people have: fight, flight, mm -hmm. or freeze. You mentioned Zoom um, and the online trainings. You feel selling digitally, you know, i.e., Zoom or even, um, you know, doing walkthrough of the homes with FaceTime and or having digital listing presentations, which, you know, pre-COVID-19 might have been um, not as popular. Do you think mm -hmm. you're going to see more and more of this when the dust settles? I do. I think you're going to see a lot of it regardless. I think you, we're still going to have, um, luxury is a want, not a need. So when you, when you have a want, uh, and wants are different for whatever affluent buyer or seller you have, whatever that looks like, you know, they're going to trust their advisor, uh, that they've worked with for years. And so we're going to give them the best, right? So whether that's Matterport, whether that's Zoom, whether that's drone work, we've, already figured out and we are figuring it out what that takes whether we're going in with specialty companies that clean ahead of time and clean after and then give those uh via zoom video via matterport whatever that is wow. also it's going to be more important to show the good the bad and the not so good you know the the all the parts to it so that when it comes to you know we're hearing agents selling in different ways one okay great, we had a sale and we signed on the dotted line and it went through right away because the, the client felt so much trust with the advisor. Or it could be they have this trust, however, until the time that they can come in and see it, they're not going to sign, you know, finally close on that deal. Sure. So that being said, that's why it's more important to show, hey, you know, let's get intricate with our video on what's not, you know, so good about this home that we're, we're looking for. Um, not only showing the, you know, happy sunshine picture of everything. Right, right. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's, a, that's a good point. Uh, I actually have a, a client here in the Chicagoland market that was looking at a $5 million property. And today, May 1st, he, he'd been looking at some oceanfront properties in Florida, but the agent um, didn't feel comfortable or may, maybe mm -hmm. because of shelter in place. Uh, I'm not exactly sure down there in Florida what the, the restrictions were, but for a couple of weeks, he's been saying, I, I don't want to put an offer in on this $5 million property till I see these other two down. And, and right. they're going to be doing basically just that, a virtual walkthrough um, where, you know, she's going to have the, the phone and, and show them the property firsthand. So right. I do think you're right that that's going to be a little bit more normal uh, mm -hmm. than was uh, in the past. We do have a couple questions that I'd like sure. to, uh, to ask. Uh, so Marjan um, says, uh, hi, thank you for hosting a webinar as it is uncertain what is in, is ahead for real estate in the near future. Would you say to your clients, what would you say to your clients um, if they ask whether to, to, to sell um, now or wait? Okay, to sell now or wait, and how would you also, if somebody's thinking about buying now or wait. Now, I'll answer first, and Anna, I'd love your you opinion. So I think it really depends on which market you're in, right? So certain markets are, are overall maybe more seller's market or buyer market pre-COVID, and, and, and then you really gotta know what the data is. I had the gal that uh, runs 
our MLS, uh, Rebecca Jensen, our, the sixth largest MLS in the country. I had her on on Wednesday and our, on the same luxury lunch and learn. And should sales, new listings are down about half of what they were a year ago. So again, what I tell sellers thinking about selling now is you got a 50% chance of selling now if we get all our ducks in a row and our first impressions are where they need to be. In other words, declutter, neutral. We're not rushing the market. Assuming that you, you know, you've know, you done all those precautions and you've staged and you neutralized, you painted, you took care of all that, you got a 50% chance of selling now versus a 0% chance if you, if, you, if you don't put it on the market. So that's one perspective. The other perspective is because it's, it's supply and demand. Because there's less supply right now, maybe the, the demand isn't as high, maybe there aren't as many showings, but you're gonna have a higher qualified showing. If somebody's going out today, Friday, May 1st, in Chicagoland market, looking at a high-end and luxury home, that's a more serious buyer than perhaps, you know, those, you know, when the shelter in place is, is removed. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that, Ann? You know, those are great points, Michael, that you made because I'm, I'm on that same page. Uh, you know, first off, it's all about the client safety. So, you know, whatever that looks like, whether they're looking for video, uh, as far as commenting on what's, it's what's great for the client. You know, what is the client asking? You have to be sensitive to them. You can give them all the market information on what's happening, what the inventory looks like in your local market. You know, you should know, you know, what's happening at the time of year because we know seasonally in some markets, yeah. you know, what's happening. So is it time to, to get this on the, on the market? The reality is yes to the sense of let's get it ready for, uh, if it's a seller side, let's get that home ready. You know, let's get it so that when, because let's first talk about globally what's going to happen. This isn't going to be every single city, every single country is going to open up across the world and bam, we're going to, you know, everything is going to come back all within the month as soon as for the U.S., as soon as all the governors lift the safer at home or the stay at home or, you know, when we're able to go back to the offices and whatever that looks like. It's going to be gradual. It's not going to be 100% open. So let's you know, understand that. Yeah. Uh, and then going from that is, I would say, absolutely get your homes ready now because you're behind the game. If in fact your, your seller or buyer decides to say, I'm ready, it's go time right now. And you're saying, okay, I need 30, 60, 90 days. They may end up going with someone else and saying, well, this person already got it, already understands, and they know how to get me up and running to where I want to be. You yeah. know, we don't have a rhyme and reason on why an affluent wants to buy or sell. So, you know, it's, it's, it, it's a need versus a want, you know, mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. where they are in the process. So you need yep. to meet them where they are. Yeah. So first off, your, your first valid point was, and you hit the nail on the head, I didn't even bring it up, is it's got to be what their why is, their want. Safety mm -hmm. is first and foremost. So I have a, a property mm -hmm. that I'm marketing. It's somebody I went to high school with parents, uh, or mother, I should say, the father's deceased. And and so safety and um, is gonna be really important. So, you know, making sure, you know, in this case, some of the things that we uh, let the agent know, we, we do have a disclosure that we make the buyer's agent uh, turn in before we accept showing. Basically, you know, have you or your client been exposed to COVID-19 um, to your knowledge? Do you have any symptoms? You know, all these questions we ask and they have to turn that in before we'll finalize um, and approve a showing. And the second thing is we make sure that we limit the, the number of touches at the actual showing. So again, for high end and luxury properties, many times, of course, the listing agent or someone on their team is there, Mm -hmm. uh, but on some of the average price properties where there might be a lockbox, and that's not the case, uh, that the agent isn't there, you know, making sure that the owner's got all the lights on ahead of time and letting the agent know to minimize contact. Mr. and Mrs. Buyer's agent, we turn on all the lights. You know, if you would just please instruct your clients, you know, not to touch anything, you know, and, and if, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of thing. So safety is huge. Um, obviously, if the, the, the client is leery, even if the, it's a great time to sell, if they're right. leery, let them be comfortable with their decision. It's their decision. The other thing you mentioned was seasonal. So for example, Chicago is very seasonal in the real estate. So in other words, you know, uh, when I was with a, a, 
a boutique company uh, called Conlin. Um, at the time, they had some statistics where two thirds of all the homes uh, that went under contract were uh, under contract for the whole year by mid June. Sixty six percent of in a given year, if a home sold, was at least under contract. In other words, it was listed and and contingent by middle of June, two thirds. So like May 1st, we are in the prime season in Chicagoland, but again, it starts with, don't make the, make sure your client is on board and they're comfortable from a safety and security standpoint. And like you mentioned, Ann, if, if you're waiting to get all your ducks in a row until the shelter in place is removed, you're gonna be behind the eight ball. At least get your ducks in a row now. In other words, painting, maintenance, all those items. And maybe you're just waiting on your photographer to go there but try to get all your ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. um, great point, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything to add to that? No, nope. I, I, you, you nailed it. Yeah, awesome. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, a buddy of mine that I graduated college with, uh, uh, Joe says, Ann Miller screams luxury, all caps, style, <laughs> communication, expertise, and relatability, to name a few obvious yet important traits. So. Uh, Joe, thank you, thank Joe. You. Joe is, uh, he used to cut my hair. I need Joe back. I, I, uh, I, <laughs> I need Joe. To, I, I know, I know. Uh, I haven't had a haircut in over a month. I'm usually wearing a hat for these trainings, but I'm like, I, I have Anna and I can't wear it. look fabulous. Oh, uh, thank you. Good from far, far from good. All right, Salvador from uh, Costa Rica. Uh, oh. Thank you for your efforts, sharing insights and keeping us in the loop. Um, and, um, and just thank you. Thank you very much, he said. So you're absolutely welcome, Salvador. Let me look to see on uh, some of our streams if we have any questions. Uh, by the way, I am uh, a soft plug here. I'm a big believer in swag, and uh, if you recall from uh, when you saw me train once. So this is my location, location, location shirt. We have a bunch of stuff, including our objection handling playing cards. You guys can go to luxuryspecialsgear.com, luxury specials gear. All right, uh, we got a lot of people giving shout outs. Let me check, my assistant also texts me questions, so let me look here. Uh, we got Dave Collins, former CEO of ERA saying hello. Uh, perfect, we got Claire Crawford Lee saying Ann Miller is awesome. Do you know uh, Claire Crawford? She's I do, of, hi Claire, uh, shout out. Yes, she had me <laughs> present a couple years ago. I could barely speak. It was at her and her husband's country club and literally I lost my voice. Oh. Um, so. Claire, I owe you something still for that. You guys were very patient there. All right, let's getting back to the, the, the questions that I normally ask a few more here. Um, let me see here. All right, this is a good one that I get asked a lot at my live trainings. Um, if you decided, um, based on all your knowledge from your top agents, and some of your top agents um, I'm, I'm good friends with. Uh, Gary out of Nashville is doing some amazing things. Yes. Um, and um, I, I could go down the list. My renegade friend, Tony Mitadero, uh, he lives in Indiana <laughs> and he should be a politician. This guy is always talking about how people are going away from high taxes in Illinois and he's licensed in both Indiana and Illinois. Great guy. But if you and Miller decide, hey, I want to go back into sales and you were to move to a new area, I get this asked all the time, Mike, if you were to move to my marketplace or if you were to move, you know, you and your wife, you picked up and you moved somewhere, what would be one of the first one or two or three things you as an agent would do to establish yourself as a luxury agent? I oh, love this question, Michael. So can I take it first? Yes. Okay. Okay. Great. So uh, I actually, I talked to, I had a phone call the other night late and I love this because I have a luxury agent that's doing that right now. And we were talking through it. So this is very timely oh, in perfect. today's chat. Good. So uh, first off, the biggest thing is confidence. So anyone on this phone, it's all about confidence because no matter what market you're moving to, I truly believe, and I don't want to speak for Michael, but it is all about the confidence you know, having the background, having the uh, information about luxury in the market. So first and foremost, research your market. So know it before you go out, because a lot of times we don't get that, you know, second chance for our first impression. So what does our first impression look like? Our first impression lo looks like, uh, I would be farming the area that you want to market and farming it by sending your newsletter, sending postcards, 
uh, let's be honest, if, if you're coming from another market and you're saying, okay, and I don't have any listings in this new market, does it matter? The answer is no. Uh, the answer is you already have a portfolio in your marketplace that you're currently successful. So you're bringing that to your new marketplace and showing your portfolio on what you've done. So I was on a webinar, gosh, last week with our number one uh, global agent, Jordan Cohen, which Michael, you know, uh, and you know, one of the things that I hear from all of our agents that are in this number one market space, no matter what brand is, they're still moving forward with sending out what they've done, that they have sold to show the communities that it still is happening in their community. One, it takes kind of that uh, objection out of the way of, well, nobody is selling right now. You know, that's not true. Uh, so let's get the objections out of the way. Let's send to that, but let's be uh, careful in our messaging. You know, we don't want to say, hey, I'm the number one in this market. However, we do want to share that we're still dominant and that we're still working forward in whatever market that is. So I, for me, it's that farming newsletter. Uh, you're sharing relevant information in that newsletter. You're sharing what's happening in their local marketplace. Uh, you're sharing you know what the days on market whatever that information is that is best from your local data that's what you're sharing so and you're also giving a little bit of introduction to yourself on you know why you've come to this community make it we've said this word a million times during this authentic make it authentic to your message for example if you absolutely love everything that the local dog shelter is doing that's what you're going to talk about if you know nothing about wine and you're not a wine connoisseur, don't talk about that. However, you can, in, a, in a, one of your newsletters, your market newsletter, bring up who the no, local uh, you know, wine store is and then send, set up a chat or an article and put that in there about them. So uh, that's what I would first do. Make sure you know, your messaging meets where your consumers are. So I can go on and on, but Michael, you go. No, no, that that's awesome. So I wrote down. I took notes. By the way, I take notes. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm learning from you, but it's also some good reminders. So you wrote down confidence, right? Confidence mm -hmm. is huge. You know, Vince Lombardi, uh, Packers Hall of Fame coach, once said, "Confidence is contagious. So is lack of it." Right. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, being confident, one of the things I tell agents all the time, right, is if you're not familiar with the area, bring another agent on your team. No different than Ann, if you go to a nice restaurant, um, mm -hmm. a lot of times, um, and hopefully that's going to be sooner than later, right? <laughs> but, but uh, you know, there might be um, somebody that's tagging along with the waiter and saying, hey, I'm, I'm you know, I'm just learning, or they introduce, say, this is Jen, Jen is, uh, I'm training Jen. Same mm -hmm. idea in, in real estate, if you're not familiar with luxury or market, bring an agent that is on your team. Um, mm -hmm. So that's something that's really important. You know, I'm gonna butcher this quote, but Zig Ziglar once says, motivation doesn't last, um, neither do, does bathing. That's why we recommend it daily. So, <laughs> so again, uh, you gotta pick yourself up. You know, some days we have highs, some days we have lows, and some mornings we have highs and lows, and with kids and, 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 and uh, e-learning, sometimes it changes by the hour. So literally, you gotta continue to build yourself up. Lisa Hayes says it better than I do. Be careful how you talk to yourself, because guess what? you are listening. And I typically, um, I, I talk about real estate. You remember this probably, Anne, from our training, but we are in a show and tell industry. This is one of my favorite drinks. It's a Tito's, little Tito's thing. And I got And it's Friday. And so it's I know Friday. what's happening at Michael's house. It's, yeah, we're, yeah, it's happy hour somewhere, right? But, <laughs> right? but I tell this story about we are in a show and tell industry, Anne, right? And so um, you have to be sensitive so you're not gloating and, and, and bragging that sort of thing but if you're working with buyers or you're working with sellers or you just had a digitally a, a closing that was done digitally um you know where literally um it, you know you, you didn't go to the closing table but the title company did everything remote talk about that so people realize that hey life is what drives real estate and people are still relocating people are still selling um and so I think that's a, that's a very valid point. Um, so thank you for, for pointing it out. Uh, good stuff. I got a, a question here from our friend Peter in um, Australia. Um, Peter, shout Peter. out to Peter. By the way, Peter, uh, and P Peter can throw down some good drinks. And we were at Inman, New York a couple of years ago. And my good friend, Jim Morton, who runs Prospect Plus, had a, a private party. And I brought Peter there along with Brad, 
from Box Brownie, and he had never had a Moscow Mule, and that's one of my drinks, it's, and, and you can have it with uh, Tito's. And uh, Peter can tell you that story, but uh, let me put it to you this way. It came out of nowhere, and he, uh, he, he definitely likes Moscow Mules. He goes, do you think COVID the, the COVID-19 crisis um, has irrevocably changed luxury sales? If so, will uh, what will be different on the exit, assuming this mess ever clears itself up? So, uh, Peter, thank you so much for the question. Um, your company, so Box Brownie, we're gonna we're plugging them, and I, I, it's not even a plug; it's heartfelt. Uh, I absolutely adore uh, Peter, Brad, the group, everything that they're doing for all of the brokerages across the world uh, to help us, so that our agents, our brokers, practitioners, uh, can really get in front of our consumers in the most positive, beautiful, uh, effective, effective manner. Um, so I say that from the heart. I just, I really adore Peter. Um, uh, just a little story. So when we had our broker runner convent conference in Chicago a year ago, uh, Peter helped with my birthday because it fell on my birthday in August. So we all went out to a little piano bar. Those of you that don't know, Peter is an unbelievable, a musician as well. So let's get back to what Peter's question is. Uh, do I think things are going to change? Yes, they're always changing and evolving. So whether it's this crisis or the next crisis that we come out of, you know, we're all, you know, whether it was the, um, what do you call it? The, uh, when the market fell out in 2008, oh, yes. when he had, we had a recession then, we're always right. dealing in crisis mode. Uh, in my opinion, it's it, there's always a new and better technology, a new and better this or that. You know, you hear all the disruptors in the market. Um, I had a great quote from Brian Buffini the other day. Uh, I watched one of his videos and it said um, about that. Um, oh, gosh, let me find it here really quick because it was such a good um, quote about you know, disruptors. Disruptors only work when you establish a new fundamental. So if you look at, you know, where we started 47 years ago, we were a disruptor, right? This was a new fundamental, selling franchises. Uh, so what's going to be the next disruptor right now? Is this disease? I don't, you know, I don't know that it's, you know, really a disruptor at the same time, it's changing the way we are doing business. Mm -hmm. And by that, working with companies like Box Brownie, we're always going to need an agent because it's a relationship business. Um, as far as how we do business, that's what's going to be changing. It's not that are we going to do business, are luxury sales going to be there? Again, this is a want, not a need. What I see across globally is all different effectual changes. That could be if you live in the city and some of our cities have been just pounded in Italy, you know, from this crisis right now. So that may mean that you're taking a deeper look introspective on what's important to you. If you live in a one bedroom and you decide that moving forward for the next year, 10 years, whatever that looks like, can you live and function well in the space that you're in? And is that, do I need an office? Or if I can't get to my building, I'm in the most exclusive building. However, the gym is not open. Guess what? I may decide I want to purchase something where I can have a home office and a gym in my home. Right. And maybe the opposite. You may decide that for a family, hey, I have this, you know, a very large home in the city. It doesn't have all the amenities. And now we're deciding that I want to go out and buy that estate outside of the city so that not only the next time or if this should happen again, I can shelter in place with my entire family and generations of family and have everything that's important to me in one place. Not, not only from a family aspect, but what is important to my lifestyle? You know, how can we benefit from education in our home, having that latest technology? Uh, the other thing that I see is, is from a technology standpoint is more and more from an agent standpoint, we need to really read up on what everything touchless, you know, Moen years ago came out with the touchless faucets, if you will. So how are we coming up with the, the touchless other than from, you know, your device, you know, your phone, uh -huh. whether that's security lighting, which we do have in place now, but it's going to go a lot deeper than that. And we need to be in the know. So I hope I answered Peter's question. Yeah, no, I think, you know, the only thing I would add to that, Peter, would be, um, and Anne touched upon it, there's going to be some people right now that realize that their priorities change, right? And so, you know, maybe they're down in 
you know, as you know, I'm down here in, in, in uh, Chicago suburbs, but maybe there's someone in downtown Chicago that's in a, in a building, in a condo, in the common areas. They're afraid of going to some of those common areas because of touching and, and that kind of stuff. And so the kids are pent up and, and, and Mayor Lightfoot in Chicago is very strict on, you know, shelter in place. And so you can't go to parks, you can't do those things. So there's going to be some, you know, generational wealth. There's going to be some wealth that, that, that says, you know what, my priorities changed. I, I want some land. I want some space. Um, it, I think a lot of it depends on, do you think this is going to be a one-time occurrence, right? In the States, the last pandemic, you know, for the most part was the Spanish flu in 1917, 18. Do you think it's going to be another hundred years or do you think th these are going to become more frequent? If you think they're going to become more frequent, people are going to reassess the homes they currently live in and either A, modify and improve or add on, or mm -hmm. they're going to you know, build or move elsewhere, uh, bigger, smaller, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, I was looking, I was on a webinar for commercial about a week or two ago and they had predictions and they said land for commercial land sales are going to really be coming up in for the rest of this year and next year. That's going to be a big motivator, uh, land to pr for product, for growing, you know, food, but also for, uh, families that decide that they want to build and they want more of a compound, if you will, or a, a larger estate. So. Yeah, Look for that, yeah. commercial practitioners. Yeah, that's that's a great that's great. Yeah, some people want um, what do you call that uh, when when you grow all your your crops and you you live off of the, the house you, you know the house and the compound. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it'll come to me here, but there's a term for that where you have you're basically um, living um, off of what sustainable. You grow. What's that? Sustainable. Yeah, sustainable, yeah. like your own sustainable compound, if you will, with crops mm -hmm. and, and and that sort of thing. Water, well water, all that. Mm -hmm. on the property. So uh, good point. I do think you're going to see um, some changes there. I do think you're going to see naturally motivation changes daily uh, from buyers and sellers, but I do think you're going to see some luxury sellers that um, that says, you know what, my motivation has changed. I have one client without getting too many details. He's talking about potentially accepting an offer that I'm, I'm shocked, you know, he would, if I had presented an offer in the price that he's talking about six months ago, he would have bitten my ear off in the phone. But, but I think, you know, he's got a lot of employees on payroll. His motivation has changed and he's encouraging people that have come through to write up. So I do think if you are a luxury seller right now and you really have to sell, do you want to set the ceiling? You know, in other words, do you want to be the first to sell in your neighborhood and set the ceiling, set the new price? Or your neighbors are going to dictate that for you. So I just recently sold a home for $750,000 and there's another home in this same subdivision and the agents call me saying, how did you get it sold? They've lowered their price because they don't have as many features as we did. And again, I told my seller, listen, we want to dictate the market right. and the price. Be the first to sell to set that new ceiling versus that other guy selling, bringing you down, even if you haven't sold. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think uh, to your point on, on luxury about the pricing, you know, I don't quote on when people ask me, what should it be priced? That's not my position my role sure. uh, at the same time i will tell you you know we're not seeing out there from all the different countries and and uh brokers and agents that i've talked to us and globally that anyone's having a fire sale at this point you know that's not where we are with luxury right now sure. uh, so it's it's holding you know and to your point michael you have to know your market is it a buyer sellers or even market you know where what's the benchmark uh yeah. but right now i've not seen uh, anyone hop on and say it's a fire sale you know let's lower the price so we can get this sold and um, not seeing that well one of the questions was how do you define buyer's market seller's market and so those of you that aren't in real estate my good friends over at keeping current matters they have some great visuals but Steve mm -hmm. and Bill Harney one of the things they talk about they have a visual and I use a lot of visuals in my presentation but um, when there's I'll start with a seller's market. A seller's market is when there's three or four, you know, three or four months or less of inventory. That's when homes appreciate, you see multiple offers. That's what we call a seller's market. A neutral market or a balanced market is when there's about five or six months of inventory. And what we call a buyer's market is when there's seven or more months of inventory. Let me give you a scenario. Uh, I've recently sold a property in a town called Barrington Hills, Illinois. At the time, there had only been uh, five sales above $2 million in the last year, the last 12 months, there's only been five sales. And at the time, 
At the time, there were 34 homes on the market above $2 million. So it, it would take literally about seven years, based on five selling a year, it would take about seven years. So there were seven years of inventory, which is a buyer's market. So you really need to understand if you're thinking about selling or buying, overall, is it a buyer's or seller market? But more importantly, and in those top 10%, you know, it, you, you, you look at the price point. So maybe, you know, my friend Joe's watching from Scottsdale. Maybe in Scottsdale overall, Joe, it's, a, it's what they call a seller's market. But then once you get above a certain price point, at some price point, the shift occurs from a seller's market to a neutral market to a buyer's market. And you need to know what that is. So the buyer's market, months of inventory, is going to be different than the entry level or starter price point. And I'm going to add to that, Michael, you know, also to that point, whether it's buyer, seller or balance, you know, you also may need to make sure that you truly are coming with relevant information. So relevant comparables. And by that, I mean, every $2 million house in Scottsdale isn't going to measure up to another $2 million house. That's so cool. let's, let's make sure you're Get, keeping it real with your, you know, seller in the sense of, first off, we all know that every single seller thinks that their house is the absolute best, right? My house is the best. Uh, so, you know, that being said, make sure you're comparing whatever the, the fixtures are within the home, you know, the age of the home, the building materials, you know, if it was it quote semi custom, was it production, you know, what was the type of home? So there's a lot of things that go into that, but right. whatever you're doing when you're pricing it, make sure you're using a relevant price metrics against another home. So you're going to really need to dig deep and understand, you know, what's in your marketplace. Yeah, that, that's a great point. So, you know, you can't compare apples and oranges, right? So right. you really have to know your property, your product versus the competition, the ins and the outs. I call it a SWOT analysis. You've got to know what the strengths mm -hmm. of your property is, the weaknesses, what opportunities are in the marketplace, right. and potential threats, if you will. Um, so that's really important. And again, the market dictates price. Sure, there's comparables and that thing, but what a seller has into the home has no bearing on what the true market value is. What the seller would like to get out of it has right. no true bearing. And so that's why we do recommend on some of these unique properties that you get an independent luxury third party appraisal done if there's no true comps in the area. Right. So last two things and I'll let you go. I told you we'd get you out of here in an hour and I'm one minute. So first <laughs> off, I, I have to remind Leslie Akers, who runs Keller Williams Luxury Division. She's got great things to say about you. I had on a couple of weeks ago. And she's I know. Oh, I love Leslie. We've hi. been on several panels together. That's she's my she's sister in another state. I'll tell you right now. Yeah she's, yeah, she's great. And she's a big fan of yours. Last question. For those agents, team leaders, people watching that might not even be real estate related, I call this my win at home uh, segment of the if you have any recommendations you mentioned before we went on or hey your dog is upstairs you know we're all adapting we're all working you know I came into the office today but a lot of these I'm doing from my home and we're all adapting any words of advice for the married couples those that are single those that have kids those that are used to going in you know to keep the stress levels down how are you or what are you doing to uh, adapt and pivot from this work and home uh, and environment that we're, we're in? Any words of advice? I do. You know, I, I work with um, my team on this a lot. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing I can say is schedule. Uh, make sure you are scheduling time for yourself, uh, but make sure you're keeping to a schedule most importantly. So that seems to help trust me, I have family members that have kids and everything that, that we talk about, it's about the schedule. When we get off the schedule, things go a little bit crazy. So for me, I, I keep my schedule the exact same as if I'm going to the office every day. I get up in the morning, I get a workout in, I hit the shower, I get my breakfast and bam, I'm on this computer, uh, making my phone calls, making my videos. Um, make sure you're, but make sure you're taking care of yourself from a um, healthy standpoint. It's easy to get sucked into all the news and all the noise that's going on. I honestly, Michael, I have not had the news on for, I think I'm going on two weeks. Good for you. Honestly, I hop on MSN and I get my highlight reel in the morning. I get it at night. 
the only time I do listen to the news is if I want to catch a weather report, which I can usually get on my phone. Sure. But I have to keep the noise out because I am a very positive person. And I know, you know, my first week, it's you, you don't want to let that fear creep in yeah. or that, man, I'm at home. We have to understand how blessed and how fortunate we are, at least I do, uh, and I remind myself daily, I still, yes, I still have a job. Yes, I, my family is safe. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have, you know, a room that I, you know, a home about. So make sure you're grateful for the little things. Make sure you're keeping to a schedule. Uh, don't overwhelm yourself. Take in little bits every day and do bits every day. You can't conquer everything at once, especially if you have kids at home. Mm. But you need to take care of you first, and they sound really selfish, even when you have kids. But I will tell you from friends and family, you have to take care of you first uh, in the ways and be gentle right now. Uh, great, great words of advice. Nothing to add to that there. That, that was excellent. Thank you. Um, take care of yourself and uh, garbage in, garbage out, right? Okay. No, it's garbage in, garbage stays. So I tell people when I do my trainings, garbage out, garbage, and people say, garbage in, garbage out. No, I said garbage stays. So mm -hmm. the news yeah. is negative. It's toxic. You know, surround yourself with positive people. Uh, affirmations when you wake up, you know, to talk about what you're grateful for before you go to bed. You know, I'm a real big believer in that, doing affirmations and, 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 and you know, that sort of thing. So great, great, great advice. For somebody that wants to find out more about uh, the Remax Collection, should they just go to the remaxcollection.com? Uh, yes, they can go to remax.com uh, forward slash luxury or the remax collection.com uh, or they can email me. I think you've got my email and your, your message there. And it's really easy. Anne with an E, Anne Miller at remax.com. Really easy. Awesome. So, awesome. Thank you so much for your time, Anne. Uh, you were excellent, like always. Um, appreciate it. Uh, great content. More importantly, the authenticity and just your knowledge and for what you're doing for the industry. So keep it up. I appreciate it. If we can help you out, let us know. And just a reminder for the rest of you, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you can go to Luxury Lunch and and spelled out learn luxury lunch and learn .com to reserve your spot for the next zoom but we built we will be streaming if you're watching through a stream group through some facebook group we stream them live to these groups every monday wednesday friday again monday at 12 30 i have a gentleman out out of texas doing some great things there uh, again my name is michael afito keep raising the bar and like my sign behind me says prove them wrong don't ever let somebody tell you you can't do something you won't amount to something whether you're white black female, male, whatever. Stop labeling people. Keep raising the bar. And please go make somebody's day. My name is Michael Fido. Happy May. April seemed like it was six months long. We're in May. Let's stay positive and let's keep moving forward. Thank you. Take care, Ann. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for your kindness and always putting, being professional and really killing it in the luxury market. So thank you so much for oh, everything that you're you. doing for us. Oh, thank you. Appreciate your time. Take care. Right, bye, guys. Have a great Friday. Bye. Bye. bye.